Hello, everyone. How's it going? This is Immigration Attorney Mamita. I'm coming to you live to talk to you about immigration and to see the questions that you may have on your mind today. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Mamita Rahman, and I am an immigration attorney. I have been practicing immigration law for the past 13 years, and it is my pleasure to do the work that I do because I believe that immigrants make America great already. So if you are joining me live today, thank you for taking the time to listen to me and to the things that I have to say. I, in turn, will do my best to answer as many questions live in the time that I have tonight. So if you have any questions about immigration, about your case, about your hopes, about your possibilities and your dreams, go ahead and drop a comment in the box below and I will get to it uh, shortly. So let's talk about something that I wanted to talk about today, which is a common fear that I get from a lot of clients and people want to know, can your U.S. citizen spouse get your green card taken away from you? Can your U.S. citizen spouse actually cause your green card to get canceled once you have it? And the answer is no. Your U.S. citizen spouse cannot cause your card to get canceled. However, here are a few things that your spouse can do. And if you're in this situation right now where you're married to a U.S. citizen, you're trying to get your green card, you're trying to get your papers fixed, you're trying to do your waiver or your perdón, and you are really living in a lot of anxiety and fear about what's happening and about being able to continue the process, here are a few things that you might be worried about. And uh, again, I want you to write my number down. It's 212-248-7907. Make sure you leave a, uh, you know, you write my number down to, because you want to make an appointment with us about your case. Uh, this is the number that you want to call. So here are the ways that your U.S. citizen spouse can affect your green card case. So as mentioned, your spouse can't cause your card to get taken away from you. Like they can't, once you've been given your green card by immigration, your U.S. citizen spouse can't just call them up and say, hey, I want their card to get canceled, right? They can't do that because the only people who can cause your card to get taken away is the U.S. government itself. But here are some things that your spouse can do. Number one, if you have a two-year conditional green card that you got uh, as a result of your marriage with your spouse, uh, your spouse can refuse to help you file to remove conditions on your application. Osita, yes, we do have uh, like almost my whole team speaks Spanish. Y yo también, yo, yo hablo un poco español, pero todo mi equipo uh, habla español y si necesita ayuda en español, uh, llámanos uh, a algún tiempo porque estamos listos para, para ayudarte en español, ¿ok? Uh, y también uh, uh, falamos portugués también. Um, so number one, if you have a two-year green card, your spouse can refuse to help you with removing the conditions. But also, here's one thing. If you have your, your case in process right now, your spouse can actually withdraw the application that they're helping you file. So that's one way that your spouse can really, really affect your case. They can say, you know, they can be mad at you. You guys can get into an argument. They can threaten you with divorce. They can threaten you with getting your application canceled. And one way that they can actually cause your application to get denied is by actually withdrawing the application that they themselves have filed, right? So what are your options if this happens to you? If your spouse is threatening you with divorce, or if your spouse is threatening to not go to the interview, or if your spouse is also threatening to just cancel, you know, withdraw your application, what is your option? Well, the number one option that you probably have is to file for a self-petition because if your spouse is doing these sorts of things, if they're actually threatening to blow up your immigration process and to jeopardize everything because of whatever that, that they're feeling that day, whatever they're angry about, they want to punish you for something, they're mad at you for something, and they want to make it clear to you that they're the ones that has power over your immigration process, the number one thing that you may be able to do to help save your case is to file something called a VAWA self-petition. Because you may not believe this, you may not, uh, you may, it may not hit you yet, However, these are usually signs of emotional abuse and manipulation and control. And underneath the law, you're actually protected and you have the protection to file for a self-petition because the government understands that when you're relying on a U.S. citizen to help you with your green card case, when you're married to them especially, there are certain dynamics of power and control. So 
if your spouse is threatening to divorce you, if your spouse is threatening to cancel your case, if your spouse is always going through your phone, they get mad at you when you talk to your family, if your spouse ever gets upset with you for sending money back home. How many of you out there have tried to send your mom or your dad money back home because they need it and you're making more here, obviously, and you want to help out your family and your spouse gets mad at that. Sometimes we also see uh, you know, spouses who want to see all of your receipts, like you can have no spending money to yourself right? You can end up having no spending money. Your spouse tries to control your finances. They want you to work a lot, or maybe your spouse doesn't want you to work. How about this? How about if your spouse is always getting mad at you for not having a better job? This is a, this is something that I particularly hate. Like, I can't believe it when I see it sometimes because on one hand, your spouse might be getting mad at you and calling you inutile and, uh, and, and useless, for not having a better job. However, they're not helping you get a work permit, right? They're not they're not helping you advance in your life to get that work permit. So if this is if these are the situations that you're living through, give us a call 212-248-7907. We would be really really happy to take a look at your case to uh, to ask you some questions to see if you qualify for filing for a self petition. Now, again, our telephone number is 212-248-7907. Here is something that you might be feeling guilty about. You might be feeling even bad about the fact that you're listening to me and that you're contemplating possibly giving us a call. It is not a sign of disloyalty. You have to think about yourself. If you are here, you've been living in the United States for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you have kids here especially. You have to take actions to protect yourself so that you don't get deported, so that you don't get separated from your family. And if the only thing that's really setting in the way is somebody who's not cooperating with you that you happen to be married to, you could still love them and care for them. That's fine. But you should still take action to protect yourself and go for these cases that that is available to you legally to, to help uh, to help secure your future, okay? All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and answer some questions. Um, our Sing uh, I-751, conditional removal, I called last Monday, I wanna talk to you. Our Sing, uh, I, I, I love that you wanna talk to me, but however, I can't speak with you directly. You have to speak with my team first, and that's the way that it works. If you wanna schedule a case evaluation, you'll be speaking with my legal team of intake specialists that is that, that they are trained especially by me. I speak with them every single day about all the people that we speak speak about uh, to try to help them. Uh, and our saying that's the way that we do it over here. Um, can you still apply for a green card through diversity visa program if you overstayed your visa from Tuku? Tuku, I don't really do diversity visas, but I believe you need to be in status to do um, to do that case. Uh, Nikhil, Nick, Will, uh, Nick Will is there. Our phone number is 212-248-7907. Jose Young, um, how long is it taking for the Perdón petition to get approved? Jose, right now, if you're waiting to do your I-601A uh, waiver or the Perdón, it's taking about two to three years right now. That's the bad news. And many of you have, may have already started this process where you're, um, you know, you came into the country illegally and your U.S. citizen spouse wants to help you and you go to a lawyer and they say, well, the only way for you to get a green card is if you leave the country and you do this perdón, but you have to leave to get your green card. And you say, OK, well, that sounds really scary, but I'm going to do it. And this process takes three to five years to finish. And during this time, your marriage is getting more and more difficult, right? More and more difficult. Maybe you've already separated from your spouse. And you're now wondering, well, what can I do? Well, believe it or not, even if you started the Perdón process, you can still file for a VAWA and, and apply to adjust status right now. And here are the beautiful things about doing VAWA. Number one, you don't have to leave the United States. You don't have to leave the country to get a green card through VAWA. Even if you came in illegally, you do not need to leave the United States. Number two, we can also help you file for a work permit and a travel document. We have gotten hundreds of work permits and travel documents for our clients who have been able to travel even with an illegal entry uh, without any danger. And of course, you know, if you have any criminal history, you don't want to travel, uh, but every case is different. Uh, but we have helped hundreds of clients get their work permit, social security card, travel document while waiting in the United States for their green card without having to leave the United States for their green card as well. And number three, if your spouse has left you or you've had to leave your spouse 
or anything has happened and they don't want to continue with your case any longer, this is where this application is going to save your life essentially, okay? Call us 212-248-7907. Um, how do you know if you're in removal proceedings on TikTok? Uh, rem okay, so for you to find out if you're in removal proceedings, the best thing to do is to see if you have an A number. Uh, your A number can be found on the receipts that you get on any case that you file with immigration, or if you ever uh, were issued a work permit, your A number will be on that. You can actually uh, call the EOIR, uh, e -O -I -R, which stands for the Executive Office for Immigration Review. You can call their hotline, or you can just simply go online. Simply just Google EOIR automated case update information. That's all you have to do, EOIR automated case. Just Google those three words, and then it'll take you to this page through the Department of Homeland Security where you type in your A number, and you can look to see if you have any upcoming hearings. Now, if you have any upcoming hearings, that basically means that you're in removal. Uh, if you don't have, if the information cannot be found, that usually means that you don't have a hearing, but that only works if you know what your A number is. How long for conditions to be removed after fingerprints from Nani Dane? Nani Dane, um, I don't know how long your case would take after doing fingerprints, but what I can say is that overall, removal of conditions will take average of about two and a half years these days. That's why immigration is literally giving out a four year extension on these cases. That is how long it is. By the way, did you guys know that for many cases, immigration is now giving out a five year work permit? This is, you know, it's really great, but also it's a sign as to how backlogged everything is and how long everything's taking. And sometimes, you know, clients might get a little upset that things are taking, you know, two, three years to process, but it's actually kind of normal these days. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I have a question here from Pablo Aguilar on YouTube who's asking, hi, Momita, how can I, how long? Do I have to wait to get divorced after I get my green card due to infidelity from a U.S. citizen, from Pablo? Uh, good question. So um, if you are waiting to get your green card with your with a U.S. citizen spouse and they're helping you, but your spouse is also cheating on you, once you get your green card, how long do you have to wait? There's no bright line uh, answer to this, Pablo, because it really depends. Now, the thing is, is if you if you stay with your spouse, you don't fall for VAWA and you stay with your spouse and you get your green card and you know that they're treating you bad anyway. So you get divorced. If you get divorced too close to uh, right after you get your green card, then obviously that's going to raise some red flags, especially if you go for citizenship in the future or if you have to apply to remove your conditions. But here is where if you have to, if you only got the two year green card, Pablo, and you know you stay in your marriage, even though your spouse is cheating on you and they're treating you like crap and you're feeling terrible and you're feeling horrible about yourself uh, and you don't deserve it, by the way, I'm just letting you know you don't deserve it. Nobody deserves that. But let's say you stick in your marriage and you get your two year residency card. Even if you get divorced right away, uh, Filing this application called an I-751 removal of conditions uh, with an extreme cruelty and battery waiver is a good way to help explain why the divorce may have happened so quickly after getting a green card issued. Okay, Pablo, give us a call 212-248-7907. Desde Busca Adios, abogado, ¿qué tiempo toma para preparar el paquete a uh, ajustes de estatus a través de uh, Visa U? ¿Cuánto tiempo necesita para prepararlo uh, después de cumplir con los tres años y ser enviado a uh, UCIS? Uh, gracias desde Busca. Uh, busca, este depende en, en su caso y, y, y si, si tiene los uh, documentos, Que, que, necesita, que necesitamos para preparar su caso, pero más o menos uh, este paquete de ajuste de estatus uh, no, no, puede, no puede tomar um, mucho tiempo, ¿sí? Pero, pero es, no, no es muy complicado, pero, pero uh, a veces puede, puede tardar un mes, dos meses, uh, pero, pero depende <laughs> si tiene los documentos que necesitamos 
para preparar su casa, ¿ok? Y si necesita ayuda, uh, puede, puede llamarnos a 212-248-7907, pero, pero creo que, que puede, uh, uh, ha hablado con, con uh, nosotros, ¿sí? Uh, ok. Ok. Uh, let's see. Do you know how long it's taking for interviews? Um, okay, so here's the thing. If you're waiting for your green card interview, how long you are going to wait for your interview will always 100% depend on two things. One, it's going to depend on what is your category of case that you're filing for. And the second is how, where do you live in the country? Because here's the thing, there are some categories of cases that immigration prioritizes first, and they're gonna give the interviews to these people first. For example, if you're the spouse of a US citizen or the parent of a US citizen, you're called an immediate relative and your case will always get pushed to the front, right? If you're filing for an I-751 application to remove conditions, your application is gonna take a step back because you already have your green card and you've gotten your extension. So immigration is like, you could wait. However, if you uh, also, it depends on where you live. For example, New York City, where I live and, and where I do the majority of my, my work, we are really, really busy. We're not going to be as busy as Columbus, Ohio, where I can get an interview in two months. So it really depends on uh, on where in the country you live, because where the case that is, the office that is assigned to your case is going to be determined by your uh, location of residence. Okay. From Jean Christian Touré, if the RFP response arrives one day late due to postal office, is it an automatic denial? From Jean Christian, uh, Jean Christian, yes. If you if you have a request for evidence and immigration does not receive it, be, you know by the final date on the deadline, you will be considered late and it'll get denied. However, if it's due to a postal office error or delay, then you could also try to do a motion to reopen for that and then show this extraordinary excuse uh, about why there was a delay in filing on time. So you can, you, you can work, it's, it, you know, you can try to get, the, get it reopened, but it, it does take more wife, I mean, more time. Mm. Okay, uh, desde Mike Jimenez. Um, Andre, uh, Andre uh, 96, salí marzo 98 y reingreso. Septiembre 98. Uh, me agarró tres veces. Me afecta. Tengo hijo militar. Desde Mike Jimenez. Mike Jimenez, sí. Sí. Uh, desde, desde sus palabras, uh, aparece que, aparece que, que tiene, uh, puede, puede tener, tiene uh, una cosa, se llama uh, la vara permanente. Uh, y es una, um, ¿cómo se dice? Um, es, es, es una, Uh, penalty. Sí, es una penalty de inmigración que es muy serio y uh, va a afectar uh, qué, qué, cuál, cuál, es, cuál tipo de procesos que puede, que puede hacer, ¿sí? Pero, pero tiene, uh, tiene una vara permanente um, y, y cuando una persona tiene la, la, la vara permanente, hay tres tipos de casos que puede ayudarles, ¿ok? Estos casos son uh, VAWA uh, y también uh, ser la, la, uh, se, uh, la visa T uh, y la visa U. Estos tipos de casos uh, son los casos mejor uh, por, por personas con la vara permanente, uh, pero, to, pero, pero, pero todos los casos son diferentes y necesita, um, uh, uh, Mike, Necesi usted necesita una evaluación, uh, puede llamarnos a 212-248-7907 para, para agendar una cita con nosotros y vamos a, vamos a explorar uh, qué, qué, qué son sus opciones, ¿ok? Y es esperamos su, su, su llamada pronto. Um, how long does it take for the judge to approve your change of status from SAFA? SAFA, I would say that your change of status, again, it's going to depend on what is the category of change of status that you're doing. 
Um, but I have to say that I think that changes of status, like from an F1 to a B1 or a B1 to an F1, these things can take up to a year. Now, if you're doing adjustment of status, which is different, adjustment of status is going to be for actually getting a green card. This is also can take anywhere from six months to a year and a half, depending on your location and category of case that you're filing. Oh, Romeo. Romeo is saying during immigration process, my U.S. spouse died. Can you kindly explain it from Romeo? Romeo, I'm first of all, I'm so, so sorry that your spouse passed away. Um, Romeo, or maybe somebody you know, um, but what what are your options if you're US, if you're married to a U.S. citizen, but your U.S. citizen spouse passes away before you can secure your green card? So here is where there may be a couple of different options. Um, obviously, if you so here's the thing: if you filed an I-130 already with your spouse and you entered um, you entered illegally into the United States you should be able to do an adjustment of status inside the United States with no problem. Now, if you did not file an I-130, but you have a legal entry into the United States, then you can file something called a widower application. But what happens if you did not enter legally into the United States, your U.S. citizen spouse passed away, and you don't have a green card? Well, we have to go back to the drawing board to see what the options are. And even if your spouse may have passed away, maybe there's a possibility for us to do a VAWA, uh, depending on what happened in your relationship. Um, second, uh, if that doesn't work, then we can look to see if you qualify for a T or a U visa. But you may also still be able to do a widow application, but you may need to look the United States to do a waiver. Um, it's just not something that I would want to, to really do um, if I can help it. But, but Romeo, give us a call, 212-248-7907. Manuel is asking, can I get a work permit while the I-601A waiver is pending? Manuel, no, not unless you also file an I-485 application. Um, um, our telephone number is 212-248-7907. I'm going to pin it right now. I have a, I don't always know how to do this. This is where I start to feel a little old. Um, Okay, pins on IG, guys. <laughs> my girlfriend is from Cuba. She just got her residence. Can I marry her? And she can help me get my papers with her uh, adjustments uh, with just her residence from Frank Porres. Frank, um, if you are, uh, there are some special provisions for Cubans, which I don't really know a lot about. So I'm just going to talk about what, how you can adjust your status if your spouse is a green card holder. Now, if you're married to a green card holder and you want to get your green card, the number two things that we have to look at is one, did you enter the country legally? And number two, are you still in status? Because if you're married to a green card holder, and you're out of status, your visa expired, or you entered illegally, you're not going to be able to do adjustment of status. And we have to look to see if we can do something else. Now, some of the simple ways around it is, well, number one, uh, for, for you to wait for your spouse to become a U.S. citizen, that sometimes can help. But also, if you are suffering in your marriage, if you're going through any sort of jealousy, your spouse is jealous with you all the time, they're toxic, you know, uh, si, si, si su novia está, está una tóxica, no es bueno, pero, pero puede, puede ayudarle en aplicando, aplicando por, por, por VAWA y es una autoprotección. Okay, no necesita su ayuda para, para hacerlo, okay? So, Frank, give us a call, 212-248-7907. Um, let's see. What about being a citizen? Um, okay, I don't know why my live on TikTok is being flagged, guys. Um, what about a citizen but having a child out of the country? From Juarez, do it right. So if you're a U.S. citizen and you have a child outside of the country, then here's what you have to do. Sometimes you can actually give your U.S. citizenship to your child overseas, but you have to, there are some kind of complicated laws that, that, that need to be analyzed because if you haven't lived in the United States for enough years after you turn uh, 16 or 14 years old, then you may not be able to give your citizenship. However, the majority of people who've been living in the United States who have children outside the United States, the process to help basically confer your citizenship to your child is 
to apply for something called a consular report of birth abroad. And if the consulate gives this to you, then that's basically proof of US citizenship. And then you can apply for a passport for your child. However, for those of you who don't qualify to transmit your citizenship to your child overseas, you actually have to petition for them for their residency first and then bring them to the US. And then uh, sometimes if they get to the US before they turn age 16, then they can automatically get your, their citizen, your citizenship at that time. Um, hi, Ivan. Um, Claudia, uh, can I talk with you? I make an appointment and tell you my story. Claudia, no, with me, you cannot speak directly, but you can speak with my amazing intake specialists who are here to listen to you and to answer your questions and to see how we can help you. Um, I've been waiting for adjustment to status and a new visa number to be available to me. It's been nine months since I was told that from Saif. Saif, there's no control over the visa bulletin and when the number is going to be available. It totally depends on the U.S. government. If you're a green card holder, can you marry someone who came here with a visa from Wahida Ibrahim? Um, Wahida, uh, you can marry somebody who came in with a visa uh, and you may be able to help petition them for a green card as long as you do it before their visa status expires. Um, but here's the thing, they have to stay in uh, without any uh, unauthorized employment for as long as it takes for the visa bulletin to become current. So it's a little bit difficult. Sometimes it's easier for them, your spouse to actually live overseas while you petition for them because there's a lot of complications, especially now since the visa bulletin is no longer current. If I did advance parole once, would that count as a legal entry when I want to fix in the future from uh, widen, widen air, uh, widen air. Yes. If, especially for my DACA folks out there, if you have DACA and you did advanced parole and you never can, you know, when you came in as a child, you didn't come in legally, your parents brought you in through the border and you don't have the proof of legal entry. If you end up doing advanced parole and you travel in advance when you get that stamp in your passport, that is now going to count as your legal entry. So in the future, when you want to fix, it's going to make it a lot easier. So I highly recommend that if you have DACA, if you don't have a legal entry, get that advanced parole done now before the law, you know, the courts rule something different and they change everything again. And it's no longer possible to do advanced parole. Get the advanced parole done now. If you need our help, give us a call 212-248-7907. How long does it take to, for judge to apply, reply to motion to advance? Depends on the judge. Uh, mi hermana me pidió hace uh, cinco años tengo TPS. ¿Cuántos años tengo que esperar más um, uh, desde Hispanic Chica? Uh, Hispanic Chica depende de, de, de cuál país uh, uh, ustedes es desde. Hay, porque porque hay, hay algunos uh, países que... que que tiene una esperar uh, muy largo, uh, como México y yo creo um, El Salvador, um, tiene, tiene um, una, una uh, file línea muy, muy largo, ¿ok? Uh, pero pero uh, más o menos um, uh, puede esperar uh, dos años, doce años. How long after submitting my documents before I get a response from USCIS from Bibi? Bibi, um, if you have responded to a request for evidence, usually you'll get a response within about two months, I would say. But sometimes it could definitely take longer. It could even take up to six months. Always check the processing time page to see what the current wait time is. Can I help my mom on her immigration status from uh, VJ Bebesota? Vijay Bebesota, if you are a U.S. citizen, you may be able to help, but it's always going to depend on what your mom's uh, immigration status was when they entered the country. Did they enter legally or did they not? Give us a call, 212-248-7907, because we try to look to see uh, every single option for people, even if you have a, um, a legal entry. Um, if my dad has two voluntary deportations, how could we go from that, from Juju? Juju, if your if your parent or your spouse or anyone has a voluntary deportation or an order of removal, even one of my favorite cases to look at for persons with removal orders or voluntary deportations is something called the T visa. And let me tell you a little bit about the T visa because it is so 
critical for people to understand what the T visa is. And the T visa is basically an application for persons who have worked inside the United States for someone who has really badly taken advantage of you. So, you know, if you're watching me, you're probably an immigrant or you have an immigrant parent and you've probably heard about all the horror, horrible work conditions your spouse or your parent has gone through or your friend has gone through. If your parent has ever complained about their bosses, being scared of their bosses, kind of their boss, you know, yelling at them. If you see that they're working a lot of hours, um, you know, sometimes, you know, like our parents don't want to share this with us, but there are a lot of bosses out there that threaten our parents with deportation. <coughs> These are actually things that fall into the umbrella of labor trafficking. And even if a person has a deportation order already signed against them, when the visa T is approved, it allows us to reopen that case and, and put the person on the path of trip green card, okay? <coughs> anyway, now that I'm coughing so hard, I'm gonna call an end to this live. Give us a call, 212-248-7907. Uh, uh, one last question from LA Viral Video. What is the T visa processing time? LA, uh, LA viral video, here's what I love about T visas even more. They're the fastest for us right now. Uh, we're getting cases approved within a year and a half, um, believe it or not. So, so think of it this way. You do the T visa, um, you know, even if you have an order of removal or, you know, like multiple permanent bars, we can do a T visa and, and help get all those things forgiven for you. Uh, even if you have a false claim to U.S. citizenship, we can get that forgiven through a T visa. It's very powerful. 212-248-7907. Once the T visa gets approved, we wait three years and then we apply for green card and you'll be you'll be a citizen uh, before you know it. OK, um, it was my pleasure to be here with you guys tonight. I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something new. Please share my videos uh, with anyone you think that could benefit from them. You never know when the knowledge that you share can really help change someone's life, okay? And we look forward to changing lives and empowering immigrants daily. So this is what our passion is, and this is what we hope to be able to help you guys with. Uh, again, telephone number is 212-248-7907. Have a wonderful night.